upfront gases of the atmosphere. Um, this, in this um, video, you're going to look at the different types of gases that um, make up our atmosphere. Three gases in particular, um, one being oxygen. Obviously, that's what we breathe, so that's a very important gas in the atmosphere. We're going to look at nitrogen because um, that actually makes up the majority of our atmosphere. It makes up about 79% of our atmosphere is nitrogen. And we're also going to look at carbon dioxide because that's what we um, breathe out. That's what the trees use to make out their energy. Um, and so that's a very, very important gas in the atmosphere. With these gases, what we're going to look at is we're going to... Well, here's what the atmosphere is made of. You also see here we've got um, argon in there as well. Argon contributes to about 1% of the atmosphere, but because it's such an inert gas, it's actually a, um, a noble gas, we don't really deal with that much at all. It's just basically a bit of a filler, if you will. So let's move on and have a look at um, what we're going to look at with our other three gases here, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and oxygen. What we're going to look at is um, these three main or four main things. We're going to look at the properties and uses for our gas. We're going to look at the commercial production of our gas, how how we produce it on a commercial scale. And we're also going to look at the laboratory production, how we might make it, make this gas in the lab, and some equations that deal with it as well. The main part of this is looking at properties and uses and the production. So, so we're going to go and focus on these. Some of these times with the equations, I'm just going to push you towards the um, textbook to look at some equations on a certain page in the textbook, and you're using the Heinemann 1 textbook for that. So we'll move on and have a look at the first gas, which is nitrogen. Nitrogen, as I said, um, it makes up about 79% of the atmosphere. That means um, if I have a litre of um, air, 790 mils of that um, litre will be nitrogen. It's very, very, it's everywhere basically. The thing about nitrogen is, though, it's unreactive. Um, it doesn't really react with anything. N2, the nitrogen gas, has three bonds between the two um, nitrogens. It's got a triple bond there. This makes it very, very stable, very, very unreactive. It doesn't want to doesn't want to mix with things really. It's an insoluble gas because it's a um, because it is a noble not a noble gas because it's a non-polar substance. It won't dissolve very well at all. <clears throat> so you can't dissolve nitrogen. It's also colorless and odorless. So you can't see it, you can't smell it, but you know it's there. So it's, you can't see it, you can't smell it, but it's unreactive, so it doesn't affect you. Um, it makes up that much of the atmosphere as well. Where is nitrogen needed, or where is it, where is it used? Nitrogen is needed in plants. Plants use fertilizer. However, looking at the nitrogen cycle, you would have looked at um, the un and understood that plants need nitrogen, but they can't take it from the atmosphere. Nitrogen is used as ammonium here or nitrate here. So Plants take up nitrogen not as N2, but as ammonium and nitrate. Um, to get to these forms, you obviously have your, your root nodules on your um, legumes, so your different types of plants, and what they do is they fix the nitrogen in the air and they create these um, chemicals here. We can also do it um, by a um, industrial process as well, but we don't go into that until next year where we look at ammonia. So nitrogen uses fertilizer. Um, as this because it's used as plants, for plants. It's used to store reactive materials. Um, if you have a, something that reacts with oxygen, you can't just store it in a container with air because obviously air contains oxygen. So we need to store it under a nitrogen atmosphere. So it means we pump nitrogen in and it basically stores it so it doesn't react with anything else. It stops it from decomposing or stops it reacting with something. There's also a, um, liquid nitrogen, which is used as a very, very a large coolant, so it cools things down. Um, liquid nitrogen can be used to store um, cells, so embryos, if you're looking at um, that side of things. Um, if you're looking at reproduction, so um, they can store that. Um, to freeze your warts off, they sometimes they can use liquid nitrogen um, to freeze your warts off as well. So when you're looking at it, cool something down rapidly and really quickly, you can use liquid nitrogen. So it's used for that. Now we're going to look at the production of nitrogen. Pure nitrogen is you, um, in a commercial sense, is made by the fractional distillation of air. Because air is 97%, um, sorry, not is 79% nitrogen, what we can do is cool down air till it all becomes liquid and slowly heat it up until nitrogen comes off. 
go a diagram for that on the next slide, but we'll, we'll go into that afterwards. So fractional distillation is how we get pure nitrogen. And it's fractional distillation of air. Production of nitrogen oxides. What we do, um, because we don't really produce nitrogen in um, a lab sense, you look at um, the production of nitrogen oxides because nitrogen oxides are the contributors to the ozone depletion. So we need to understand how these form and we might want to look at how these react with things. Nitrogen oxides also contribute to um, acid rain, so it's nice to know where they come from. To produce nitrogen oxides, what we do is we have two ways. We can form um, nitrogen 2 oxide, which is NO, or we can form nitrogen dioxide, which is NO2. Where if our have our NO, what we do is we use 50% uh, nitric acid and copper and react that together and we form our NO. If we want the extra oxygen on there, what we do is we use a concentrated nitric acid and copper and that produces this. Okay, Page 347 is where you find the equations for these two reactions and it would be nice if you had a look at those as well and just looked at how we produce these in a lab. Moving on, this is fractional distillation of air. Fractional distillation of air is used to make nitrogen. It's also made, used to make oxygen as well. What we do is we input, take in the air, just from the atmosphere, just take it in, and we heat it, um, we compress it a lot. We basically make it really, really small. Okay, We push this plunger down and it makes the air really, really compressed. It then goes and gets cooled, and this compressed air is cooled by liquid nitrogen and it forms liquid air. Okay. Once we get liquid air, it's about negative 200 degrees Celsius. Okay. Slowly but surely, what we do is we heat up our air, and what we get is nitrogen gas coming off one side of it, being boiled off, and liquid nitrogen, sorry, liquid oxygen coming off the other side. So this is how we get purification of a gases in our atmosphere. We cool them down a lot, and then we boil them off at their different temperatures. So nitrogen gas comes off about negative um, 190 and liquid oxygen comes off at about negative 185. Okay, so that's fractional distillation of air where we cool it down and slowly warm it up and take off our fractions of air. I'm going to move on now to oxygen and look at how it's, um, what happens with it. Oxygen is um, the second most abundant gas in our atmosphere is about 21%. Um, it's a very reactive um, gas. Even though it has a double bond, it's, it's a lot more reactive in it, and it likes to play a part in a lot of things. It's very slightly soluble, um, very, very slightly soluble. If it was insoluble, it would have fish dying left, right, and center because they use the dissolved oxygen in the water. Okay, but um, what, so oxygen, pretty much soluble. Are pretty slightly soluble. It's um, very, very minimally soluble. So what we can do, um, I'll, I'll explain this in class actually. It's colourless and odourless, so we can't see it, we can't smell it, and it's got a double bond between the two oxygens there. So you're going to need to know these properties about it. Um, it's reactive, slightly soluble, it's odourless, colourless, and it's got a double bond. Where is oxygen used? It's used in respiration. We breathe in oxygen. We um, use it to produce our energy. Okay. It's also used in combustion, and it's also used a lot in chemical production. When we need to oxidize things, we're using oxygen. Okay. So, there are the places that it's used in fermentation. It's not you. Yeah, it's not used in fermentation, but lots of other chemical productions. We use a lot of oxygen. Okay. This green box here talks about and explains how we test for oxygen. Okay, To test for oxygen, what we use is a red-hot splint, and what will happen in the presence of oxygen, it will burst back into flames. And I'll give you a um, demonstration of that on the next slide. So oxygen, used for respiration, combustion, and production of chemicals, and what it does, it makes a red-hot splint burst back into flames. So. This is to do with the production of pure oxygen. We fractional distillation it. We use fractional distillation on it. So we cool down air again. Obviously nitrogen comes off the top and oxygen comes off the bottom. So that's how we commercially obtain oxygen. 
to produce it in the lab, we haven't got liquid nitrogen. So what we need to do is use a chemical reaction. And what we do is the de decomposition of hydrogen peroxide with manganese dioxide. And this is also effectively known as the elephant's toothpaste reaction, where we have the production of oxygen and water from our hydrogen peroxide. Here's a demonstration of it. So I'll just play this and I'll explain what's going on. The black powder is manganese dioxide, and in the beaker there we have um, some hydrogen peroxide. So pop that in, and we get obviously this cloud of um, looks like smoke happening, but it's actually steam because this this decomposition actually is an exothermic reaction where um, energy is coming out of it, so it's heating it up. So we get oxygen coming off and a bit of steam. What we can do um, to understand if this is oxygen. What we use is a red hot splint, and this is going to come in in a second, where we have our red hot splint here. We're going to put this into our oxygen, our so called oxygen, and see what happens. What happens? It bursts into, bursts into flames, and obviously, because oxygen is used for combustion, when you have a lot of oxygen around, it's a lot easier to combust things with it. So as soon as you put it in there, it burns really, really brightly it's by using the oxygen. And there is our decomposition of um, hydrogen peroxide. Moving on, um, that's oxygen, how it's produced and how it's used um, on the back thing. Next one is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is um, a very, very trace gas in the atmosphere. However, it's very, very important. The percentage in the atmosphere is only 0.035%. So that means if we have a litre of um, air, there will only be about 3.5 mils, no, sorry, 35 mils um, will be carbon dioxide. Actually, no, less than that. Probably 0.3 mils will be carbon dioxide. Getting my percentages all stuffed up there. Okay, so it's a very, very small amount of gas in the atmosphere. However, it's very important. It's used for um, photosynthesis. Um, so that's obviously that what supports life on Earth. So that's a very, very important. Interesting fact is that it sublimes. It doesn't have a liquid state. It goes straight from solid to gas. It puts out fire because it doesn't react with oxygen. Um, and the most... Um, fires only burn at a certain temperature where they can't actually break the bonds in carbon dioxide and get the oxygen. So it puts out fire. It's very slightly soluble, so um, it dissolves a bit in water. Um, not a heap, but it dissolves a fair bit. That's how we get carbonated drinks, because of the carbon dioxide dissolved in water. It's odourless and colourless, so we can't smell it, we can't see it. And interesting thing is that it forms carbonic acid with water. So um, that's why rainwater is slightly acidic because we have carbon dioxide in the air dissolving into um, the water. So it forms a carbonic acid with water. How is it used? As I said before, photosynthesis. Um, plants take in carbon dioxide and they produce glucose. So photosynthesis, big import, very, very important with carbon dioxide. It's used to carbonate drinks. So the reason we get um, fizzy drinks is because they pump carbon dioxide in there. Um, it's used for dry ice. Another um, very, very cold substance. Cut dry ass is also used to burn off warts and keep things cold as well. Um, you can also get um, dry ice to um, just keep your drinks cold as well if you want. It's also used for fire extinguishers because it puts out fire. So you get carbon dioxide filled um, fire extinguishers and they're kind of like um, the fog ones. So you have fire extinguishers which are filled with carbon dioxide. The green here again is the test for carbon dioxide. What it will do is it will turn, turn lime water, which is normally a clear substance of um, calcium hydroxide, into a cloudy substance where it forms calcium carbonate. So um, that's your test for um, carbon dioxide, where it turns lime water cloudy. How do we produce carbon dioxide? There's two ways. We produce it by fermentation. Obviously, um, if you have some ginger beer or some beer in general, champagne as well is fermented where we're turning sugars into um, alcohol and carbon dioxide. Um, it's also used via combustion as well. So combustion produces a large amount of carbon dioxide where only obviously we know that the detrimental effect that has on the greenhouse and um, the global warming climate change style of things. So production of carbon dioxide is also through 
fermentation and um, combustion. And we separate the carbon dioxide out through a, different, a few different means to do that. Um, this should be production of carbon dioxide. Um, carbon dioxide. Um, I haven't changed it from the last slide from copying and pasting. But um, to do this in a lab, what we do is we form it, use an acid with a metal carbonate. And as you guys know from earlier chapters, I think it was chapter 13, where we looked at acids, acid and metal carbonate will form a salt, water, and carbon dioxide. And we can do that in a lab as well. Um, so that's, and this is not, that's not the page that you want. Um, I can't remember what the page actually is, but it's not this page. Um, but that's production and, um, well, the large scale production of carbon dioxide via fermentation and combustion and the, um, the laboratory production of carbon dioxide via an acid and a metal carbonate, or a metal hydrogen carbonate, if you will, kind of like the um, vinegar and bicarb soda can be used to produce carbon dioxide as well. That is the acids, or sorry, that is the gases in the atmosphere. Um, it's very, very quick, very, very simple. Um, so what I'll suggest you do as well is read the chapter um, have a read through, look at what it actually says there and use this as a reference just as a, as a starting point. This helps you get through the, helps you with some of the things that are in there anyway. So this is not the be all and end all. You do have to read the book as well, that chapter. And hopefully what we'll do is in the lab, do a couple of these experiments just to produce some of these, um, these gases in a lab. And that will be it. Until next time, take it easy. Ah. Sorry, no, don't take it easy. We have sample questions. What questions will be asked on this chapter? What you might be asked to do is write balanced equations for the production of some of these gases. You'll need to be able to explain the properties using the structures. So obviously, you know, need to remember how to draw valence structures for these gases. That shows all the different bonds that are between the two molecules. I'll reiterate, nitrogen has a triple bond Oxygen has a double bond and carbon dioxide, oxygen in the middle, sorry, carbon in the middle, two double bonds to oxygen on either side. And you should be able to explain the uses. The, um, the questions that you want to deal with are these ones here. Um, these will pretty much get you through with what you need to know in terms of um, these gases and using these gases. But the big important thing is structure and properties and explain the uses. Um, balanced equations are always helpful as well just to get you in the right track and that is it that's the last one and now you can take it easy and do some of these questions <laughs>